Here in our DOF save at Almeria, we're about halfway through our first season at the club. Idiger Johnson, the head coach that we've appointed to lead our team from our position as the director of football, is doing a pretty good job, actually. And I'm quite excited to show you the job that he's doing. I've also made some big moves in the transfer window already, as we've just gone into January. And finally, I promise we're going to have a look at Spurs and what they've been up to as well. Shall we um, get into it? I think we should. Hello and welcome back to the Almeria DOF save. Halfway through the season now, we're going to jump straight into it because I have some news that I'm excited to share. We have made Ulysses Chavez Caratero a permanent transfer at the club. At least we've arranged to do that. I adore this man and... I adored him when we signed him for Spurs. I could see the potential. The fact that he had like five-star potential at Spurs made me think his like potential ability in-game must be really, really high. I'm thinking like 180 plus, 190 plus. I don't really know exactly, but it looks like it's going to be amazing. He's 20 and already this good. And he started this season on fire. I'm going to show you all of the results up to this point here. We're on the 2nd of January, about halfway through the season. But I wanted to just start off to show you immediately that... He is joining permanently. It is all arranged. It will actually go through in the summer. So we've got the rest of the season with him on, uh, on loan where we're paying him about £15,000 per week. And we are going to sign him permanently. And we've put him... Can I see exactly what he's going to be on? Can I show you exactly what it's going to be? Here it is. Look, it's £13 million. Here's the exact deal, actually. Look, £13 million rising to... In fact, I can't actually show you how much it's for there. Rising to 45. It's about £10 million at actually coming out of our transfer budget rising to 45 which i think considering that his value is 53 to 63 is pretty good it does seem to be a thing in fm this year that if you have a player on loan you can get them for a pretty good price weirdly if you do like a, a future fee i just tried my luck this was back in like i don't know like november i tried my luck and realized that they would go for it we're gonna get him for 30 million rising to 45 this is the contract that he goes on to 45k per week I think this is just a steal, and especially because so far this season, he's been really, really good. He's got 11 goals in 14 appearances in the league, 11 goals in 12 starts. He has become and maintained his position in the side as our first choice striker, and he's actually scoring goals. When we loaned him out to Fulham, we were a bit worried, or at least I was anyway, that he didn't score a load of goals for Fulham when he was behind Mitrovic. He was a bit younger. So far, this has been more than worth the £1.4 million we paid for him. And that's the exciting news that I wanted to start today's video with. In today's video, just to kind of sum up what we're actually going to do then, we are going to go through everything that's happened between the start of the season to now to show you how our season is going with our man. Where is he? Ida Good Johnson, the Iceman. With Ida Good Johnson in charge at the club as our head coach, he is studying for that pro license, which was mentioned in a comment a few few episodes ago and we put him onto that that training last episode it's going to take about a year but he is hopefully going to improve too he's doing all right he's changed his tactical style once again by the way do you remember how he was gag and press then he went to wing play he's now vertical tiki tacker which i think i'm quite on board with he's decided to start playing that now so i do need to update my tactic screen actually he is doing a pretty decent job should we have a look at how he's doing in the league table look 18 games in about at the halfway mark, about to play our 19th game against Elche, which I think I might do as a live com because we, I, I think it's nice to see the players in the match engine showing you how they're actually getting on, you know, the types of roles that they're going for. It's a good way to catch up with how the season's going. We're going to play this Elche game. Elche are down in 16th. We're in six. We're doing all right. We're in a European spot. If we qualify for Europe this year, I'm classing that as a really good building block for the future i think this will be a success we've told him in fact our promise to the board was that we would finish as qualify for the conference league which i'm not actually sure exactly which that one is is this conference league here or is this this must be europa league i think right conference league must be one below this because we've got champions league here Maybe this is Conference League in 6 and it's Europa League in 5th. I'm not actually 100% sure. Maybe we should check that. Is that in the rules? I guess it depends who qualifies where. It says it here, look. It is 5th and 6th is Europa League group stage. 7th is Conference League playoff. So if we finish in 6th, it would be Europa League. 7th is Conference League. There we go. We've answered that question. Chavez Caratero, by the way. Top goal scorer in the league so far. This is why I'm so excited to make him a permanent fixture in the squad. I guess, though, let's have a look at how those fixtures have gone in our first 18 games. Seven wins, seven draws, four losses. Let's have a look at the schedule here. 
and go back to where it all started at the end of last episode. We played through actually a while, didn't we? And played to, was it about, I can't exactly remember which game it was. It was about this Valencia game around this point, right? Anyway, from there, let's imagine it is from there because I'm not going to go and check. I, I just don't want to right now. I'm going to go from here. Since then, look, we beat Getafe. We lost to Vigo. We are up and down. I mean, recently we've got into some good form here. Some of it is, well, one is a friendly there, but we've gone four unbeaten most recently. We did lose a couple. We lost to Vigo, South of Vigo here, beat Las Palmas here, Rafa Varane with an 89th minute winner in that one, which is brilliant. We lost to Atletico Madrid. Maybe you'd expect it. Carateri scored twice though. Then maybe our best result of the save so far. Did I show this last time? I feel like I might have done. I'm not sure. Anyway, Caratero scored and Moretti scored to win against Barcelona 2-0. Definitely our best result of the save so far. We then continued from there. A 1-0 loss against Bill. I won a win against Bilbao, an own goal. Lost to Real Madrid. Again, do you expect it? Possibly they've got Matthias Tal. I think we looked at him when we were at Spurs didn't we? And by the way, I know that I keep saying it, we will definitely have an extended check-in with Spurs in today's episode. I really want to go and show you some of the things that have been happening in there. Quite an interesting story that's developing actually at Spurs. We'll get into that in a little bit. A lot after losing to Real Madrid, we drew to Sevilla. We beat Gijón, the best name to, to say, I think, in Spain. It was a last second equaliser from a uh, Oh, a last minute we winner, I should say, from Caratero. He scored again in this one. Diacarbi scored in that one too, a 2-2 draw. Then we beat Cadith. He scored a hat trick. This is how good he is. In fact, should we watch his goals here? This is probably the thing I'm most excited about in this save at the moment is Chavez Caratero and the fact we get him for keeps in the future. Let's watch his goals in this one. It was a 4-2 win. I mean, we'll watch their goals as well, but let's see some highlights. Here is the opening one. We are in the white, of course. There's Caratero leading the line there. Look, Correa playing on this right-hand side, plays him in. The finish is good. Left-footed. That's so nonchalant, isn't it? Just putting it into that far corner. We had a red card in this one as well. Was it? Was this the Neymar one? It was. It was the Neymar red. He got sent off and he's going to be banned for a little bit. Neymar playing as the left winger a lot. That was into Caratero. It comes back to Nuna Freitas. Honestly, he is so exciting as well. We'll go through all of the all of the appearances and for each of our players. And I want to show you Nuno Freitas as well. The young players we've signed for Almeria puts us in a brilliant position. That's not great from the goalkeeper, the Chevalier there. He was a good keeper. I still wonder, can we get Colon at some point in the future? If we make enough money, that Matthew Colon keeper thing would be great, wouldn't it? It just seems like out of our grasp at the moment. Here's the second from Caratero. Again, left footed, popping it in at that near side. Lovely finish from him there. And I think the next one was hidden too. It was on the hour mark. We scored this one. You can sort of see who's playing well at Diacarbi and Pacheco at the back. Keeper comes out, doesn't win it, goes through him, pops it into the empty net. That was his third, and then they did score again at the end. Sada Asmoon scored, which, to be honest, we don't really need to go and have a look at, do we? I think that sums it up how excited I am about Caratero. We won that game 4-2. Then we had a Spanish Cup game. Caratero was injured in this one, but Neymar scored. I think Neymar started up front in this one. Quite a weird selection from Eidegger Johnson. Neymar started as a striker look. There's Freitas, by the way. This is why I wanted to show you him. Look at his development. Look at what a player he's going to become. Look at this potential. Lacks consistency, but I mean, what a player he could be at 20 years old. Him and Caratero, we've got a bright future if we can hold on to these players. Alongside other players like, although I talk about Dak, we'll come to him in a second. Other players like Luis Perez, who is a centre-back that's been playing a lot of left-back, actually. We talked about needing some other wing-backs, didn't we? Perez comes in. He's played at left back a lot, but I'm quite happy about it because it means that he's playing games and developing and he's going to be a brilliant in the future. We have got a lot of young, really exciting youngsters, new gens that we can build a team around. I'm really, really positive about the future. I, hopefully you can see that because I'm having a lot of fun with this save. It's really, really good. That is how we're doing then. Those are the results. Let's have a look at the uh, the 11. I need to now change this again from Geg and Press, which it was to vertical tiki Taka in the same formation because he just keeps flipping between them. He did go back to Gegenpress for a little bit. Now he's gone to vertical tiki Taka. Um, let's go through the team so I can show you who's been playing where just so you get a bit of a picture of how things are going. Then we'll play this game against Alce. Then I'll show you some transfer stuff and I will show you that Spurs update as well. Goalkeeper has been Chevalier. He's played 19 games. Pozo has been our number one right back, our only real right back. He's played all 19 games as well. Left back has been Aaron. He's played 15 because, as I mentioned, our our youngster, Luis Perez, has been playing as a left-back fairly often too, and he can do a decent job at it as well. But Aaron's been first choice. Centre-backs has been Don, Don? <laughs> John Pacheco 
at right centre back. He's still playing games. I don't know if he's the future, but he's all right, isn't he? He's good enough to kind of stay in there. He is wanted, actually. Chelsea want him. Do you know, if they made a big bid, I would be tempted. Because we've got Perez, because we've got Diakabi, they're actually probably this way around most often. Diakabi's played 17. This is usually our defence. Midfield two, Samu and Moretti. Very much the first choices in their 19 games apiece. I did want to give more game time, or I wanted more game time to be given to Berkovic, the youngster, because I think he's really good. But he did tear his thigh muscles. He's been out for ages with that, so that's why he's not played as many. But I think he's got loads of potential too, so I do hopefully want to see him get some game time in front of those we have alejandro mostly well actually i say mostly it's correa off the right hand side with alejandro playing every now and then he's played five games kratos through the middle as the uh, attacker midfielder here and then usually weirdly neymar as the left midfielder before he got this red card 14 games for him lots of games for vela a fair few as we say about alejandro as well and that's kind of it really jordi shelton by the way in midfield has come on as a sub 19 times out of 19 games. It comes on for Samu or Moretti usually. Then up front, we talked about it loads already. Caratero is the guy here. Look at the uh, relationships here. Despite all of that, despite these guys not getting on, etc. They're doing pretty well, aren't they? You can see the goal scorers. 11 from Caratero, 3 from Neymar, 2 from Correa, 1 from Freitas, 1 from Diakabi. We've got a couple of goals for Shouten on the bench as well. He comes on every game, as we say. Perez has got one and uh, Robertoni has got one. And Varane's got one, which we saw before. That's the update on who's been playing and where. I'm going to unpick these now. And what we're going to do is go into this match with Alce. And uh, we're going to watch it because I feel like it's just, it's a good way to see how the season's going. To see actually how good are we as a team. We're going to bring Watching Man back from his holiday. We're going to go across to Almeria on here and see where, where's the schedule on here. See if we can go and watch this game with Alce. I need to go on here apparently and see this one there. We'll watch that game. Go back to us. Make sure we go on holiday for one day. We're going to go to this game. We'll talk about some things as well. Some updates in terms of transfers as well. Before that Spurs update. And that's going to be our episode today. I might go to the end of the window. If I if I do, if I do any business, I'll show it in today's video. If it's not so much because I feel like I want to hold off until the summer, then we'll probably just do this in today's episode. Let's get to the game though and, uh, and see if we can beat Alce to solidify our place in those European spots. All right, then, into this game with Elche we go. I don't even know if that's how you say it, to be honest. There is the Almeria team. It is Chavez Caratero, Moretti. In, okay, I think those are in the wrong positions, but it is Caratero to lead the line. Our oh boy, they have got Ponce leaving the line for them. Let's see who... I don't think Moretti's going to be in behind the striker. In fact, it is Freitas, as you'd expect. Alejandro on the right, Correa on the left, Samu and Moretti, as we'd expect in the middle. The defences, as you'd expect as well. Pacheco in there alongside Diakabi. That means we've got Luis Perez on the bench. Here are the subs here. You may see some names that you don't recognize actually maybe less so in that regard but you may see some names that you think are missing i have sold one or two players since last episode too which i want to show you in a second when we go through some transfer stuff and there's also somebody signing as well a really a, another youngster for quite cheap too that i want to show you as well there's the alche formation and tactic we're playing this 4231 i imagine it's vertical tiki taka we'll find out what the roles are after half time we are though underway in the uh the well, let's actually have a look here. Let's put it on here, the league table. In our race, our uh, our pursuit of European football. We are one point clear of Valencia with an extra game in hand. So we do need to make sure we win this game to stay ahead of them. They play Barcelona later, which will be a tricky game for them, of course. No highlights so far. Here's the first one. Pozo down the right-hand side into Freitas, the young Portuguese, in behind our striker. Samu loses it, but wins it back, keeps it and drills it wide just wide it was a good effort that's the first highlight of the game i feel like the last one of these we didn't really have any highlights the uh the football's maybe not as intense as it was at spurs at least in terms of highlights that we see that's a really long throw from the left hand side there pozo might pick this up does pick it up eventually i'd like to see a caratero chavez caratero goal in this one i've been hyping him up quite a lot correa won't win that header and elche have the ball to try and clear it they're passing it around at the back is Guti. Raul Guti. That's a great name of Real Madrid legends. Just mixed together there. I still got it here. This could be a highlight for them unless we can win it back there. No, this is good football from Alce in their green kits. And he's headed it wide. It was a chance for them. Good football from them. Did I just see Isaac? They've got Isaac Hayden. We sold Isaac Hayden to them. He's on their bench. I've just noticed down, down here. Look, so 
There's uh, there's one. They've also got Serge Aurier. It's a very strange team. And Omar Mascaral. It's a weird team. Most of them on the bench there. A weird bench for Elche. Corner to us. The Akabi should be a threat from them. I don't really know how we've set them up because he scored one goal this year. But he's very good in the air. He's big. He should should maybe do better. We've lost it. They're gonna they're gonna counterattack on us. Guti. Over to Riggio. The, when they get the ball, they are holding on to it. That's gonna be cut out by Chev uh, Chev Chevalier. I don't know why I really struggle with his name. I do know why. It's because I really struggle with names in general, I think. He's cleared it, and it's gonna be I think this is gonna be their highlight again. Ponce, Ezekiel Ponce. He's been quite good on FM in the past, hasn't he? Blanco down the left. Fabian. All the way back. Gooty. I talked about... Oh, my word. That is dreadful from the keeper. I need, we need Matthew Cole on right now. Chevalier's been good this year. I feel like we've now seen... We saw that horrible mistake that he made in the highlights that we looked at. And now we've seen this. He's maybe, um, he's maybe one that we can try and improve on. For now, though, he's probably... He was the best keeper we could get, I think, that was interested in us. But right now... He's maybe letting us down a little bit. We're losing this game despite being the better team if you look at the stats. We've had the possession as well. We've not really created anything. Let's have a look at the changes that have been made. There's been a couple. Moretti's gone off for Shouten and Pacheco's gone off for Perez, who's come on and started really well, actually. There's the um the, the roles look. It's a no-nonsense centre-back. He's come on as DM, two DMs, an AM, inverted wingers, and then Chavez Carateri on a 6.4 up front. Varane is on at right back, I've just noticed. Freitas has gone off. How's that worked out then? If Freitas has gone off, Robertoni's on. We've actually made more changes than I've realised here. Pozo's gone off for Varane. I'm not sure about that change. I think we do need a right back still, don't we? Can we make a chance to equalise? It's what we did in the other, the other live com that we've had. Lazaro with that late equaliser. Varane! I mean, that's maybe why you bring him on at right back. He's he's a goal threat. He's not scored. Um, we might lose this game. We have got this in us, though. When I was looking through, we've gone four unbeaten. It was we're due a loss. The way that we've been playing is that we go on a great run and then we lose a weird game against, like, I don't know, like Pamplona. This time it's Elche, and it looks like we might fall to a defeat in this one. I suppose that's what you'd expect from a team in about six. We can't win all of our games. A home game against Alche, though, you would want them to do a little bit better, wouldn't you? They're taking their time from set of pieces now. Can we go on the attack? Can we get another highlight? Can we have a decent chance? I don't think we've had a decent chance. Have they always been five at the back? I think they might have gone to that. It's added time. We're going to lose. We have lost. There is Johnson. I hope, on the side that I think it actually might be. It won't be our manager, will it? Because we're, we're literally on holiday, so I think it will be. Raul Guti's man of the match, apparently, and we've lost to Alche table or the table looks like this we drop into seventh which is conference league isn't it with an extra game played it makes it tricky it's not a game we should be losing we kind of have to hope that barcelona who are second in the league beat valencia to, to help us out a little bit there not a great result not one that i'm massively worried about it feels like something that definitely was possible but we fall into a defeat there Let's jump back in to uh, to me as the manager here, and I'm going to show you some transfer stuff. Okay, I just wanted to start, actually, before I show you that transfer stuff, this news email here, because I feel like it really does sum up things with how this save has started with Almeria. It says that we are 20 games into life with his new club. The jury still remains out on level-headed manager Ida Johnson, which I think is just fair. We've done okay. We're seventh in the league. It's not been amazing, but it's definitely been solid. And it also talks about the fact that we intend to bring young players into the first team. It's something to keep an eye on when we dip into the transfer market. It is absolutely something that we're trying to do as myself as the DOF and with Good Johnson in as the manager. I like the fact that it says this because he's actually been managing the team. It treats him as the manager. It even does that on things like the awards for the award winners. He has, um, oh, there's player of the month, by the way. Chavez Carretero got player of the month this year. Manager of the month. I don't think he's won one yet, but if he was to get one, if we were to get, say we had a really good month, the manager of the month would go to Johnson, even though he's only the assistant manager because he's been in charge of the games, which I think it's quite nice. It makes this DOF save feel like an actual thing in the game even though technically it's not is it anyway the things i wanted to tell you about in terms of transfers are as follows we've got a couple of things going on first of which obviously this chavez caratero permanent deal is going to happen in the summer 
We're just about to sign this guy for 50k. He's 16, and I just feel like he's going to be really good. We did have a scout report. It looked like he's going to be really good. That was back at the start of the season when I signed him. Since then, we um, it's been about six months or whatever, however long it's been since then. He's going to come in. I'll show you him when he actually does join, which is tomorrow when the window actually opens, or the fourth, sorry, when the window actually opens. We've also, though, got this going on. Keiki, the young Brazilian centre-back, who's he's okay, Hasn't been in the team at all. He's played zero games this year. So I've decided after receiving a bid from, it's from, who is it from? Bristol City for £10 million. Pounds, I've decided to accept it and he's probably going to move on. In fact, I'm going to encourage him to move on a little bit more because I don't really want him to stay. He's not playing. And if he's not playing, then we might as well let him go. I've transfer listed in two to hopefully convince him to move on. He is probably going to move on for £10 million. That in itself fund the Chavez Caratero deal all but you know three million of it which I just think just shows how good a bit of business that's going to be I know I keep talking about it anyway Keiki moving on is also going to join another player that's moved on which is Pats and Daka another player that just was not playing he became second choice to Chavez Caratero and he's 29 and he's on decent wages was on decent wages we got a bit of 7.5 million pounds he played 14 games look didn't score a goal, which has just convinced me that we need to move him on. I know only five of those as a start. I thought he'd do a lot better than he did. And I know we've made a loss on him, which I didn't sign him. But 7.5 for a player that's going to turn 30 pretty soon. For a player that's not playing and doesn't score goals. I just think it makes sense. It can help us to buy in to more of these youngsters, which are just turning into really good players. Pats and Dak has moved on then in the latest transfer move. And it leaves us... With a little bit of money to spend if we want to in this window. I'm going to have a little look through things. If I do choose to bring people in, I'll put it into the end of the video. But at the moment, I'm kind of happy to keep it until the summer where we can... Well, we add this Bertrand guy where we can actually, I think, continue to improve this team. I did want to show you as well. For some reason, it's not on here. Is it because he's joined the under... When, under 19s where he, where, he, where he came in? But Hedwig Cock, I showed you him before. Look at him. He's worth 19 million or 33 million if you're going to go to the top end of his age range. We are finding these wonder kids. I keep just doing these uh, recruitment focuses to find them. Here's another one. Look, there's 30 in progress. I keep just redoing this. Like there's here, look, there's loads of them on here where I just keep finding these 19 year old, 17 year olds. Like this guy is somebody that we could go and sign. He's 17 with loads of potential too. Now valued at 14 million, but there is loads. He's at severe look. I'm managing to find so many youngsters, new gen youngsters on this save that are just brilliant. Hedwig Cock being a real example of that. We signed him for 7.5k from a Belgian team and he's now in our under 21s. Do you know what? He can play left back because he's left footed. Do you reckon he'd get game time if I put him into the first team squad? I feel like it's silly not to. If I put him in the first team squad and then make him available for the other squads, is that better? Where, where is he on here? Hedwig, Hedwig. I mean, it's also a fantastic name, isn't it? I'm going to make him available for the under 19s for 90 minutes all the time. But I, I, I wonder if he does get a few games. He might do. Maybe some sub appearances. Let's find out. That's where we're at with transfers. I'm going to sell on at Keiki to give us a bit more money. I'm going to have a look to see if there are any really good players available. Players that are maybe have release clauses are just a little bit younger. I was looking at loan players here. Look, let's just look right now at if I go to players who are i like to look at play anybody who's interested at all let's go to doubtful i just want to look at players that are those young ones and maybe see if we've got some good ones that are interested in us and uh maybe go from there also goalkeepers maybe something to look at I've also included our players on here because why not right have i selected a position here no these are just 18 year olds that are interested and playing around i like to put the fee releases in here to see like this guy magda He's, I mean, he's 5'11 and a centre-back, maybe a left-back, but he could come in and he's got a release clause of how much was that? £7 million. We need a left-back. Could he be that guy right there? Like, it's, they're out there. They're not that difficult to find. I'm going to keep having a look, I think, over the course of this, this January window. If I bring some in, I'll put them in the video. If I choose not to because we don't need them so much, I think a right-back maybe is necessary. Maybe a keeper too. I will let you know. What I'm going to go and do now, though, is finish off bit with... Something that I promised you I was going to do. Let's take a look at Tottenham Hotspur, where Will Still is the manager. They are with their okay finances. I told you they'd be fine. It's not rich yet, but I think it will recover. They're second in the league. They're doing okay. They are 
They are being beaten by City this year. We won the league the past two seasons. This year, not quite as much. They're still competitive. Villa in third, by the way. They're, they're second. They've lost three games, one of them to City. And uh, they've won 13. They've drawn a fair few of those games as well, actually. I wonder if they're going to have a better second half of the season. But Spurs in second with Will still still as the manager. I did notice as well, Harry Kane broke the goal scoring record. He's still playing for them. They were also, I don't know if he signed it. They were offering him a new contract. He's got a contract until next summer now. So they must have extended that as well. And they could extend it again by another year. He's still starting for them. They have made some transfers, obviously. There's the 11 that played in the most recent game. Familiar, right? It's basically our signings. It's Poro at right back, Udoji at left back, Costa still there, Romero and Timber. I mean, Romero is still starting for them. Enzo Fernandez, Bellingham, Camavinga, Leao on the left, France are on the right, Sesco leading the line in the most recent game. They do still have, that's just on contracts. Let's have a look at the general info here and sort it by position. They still have Victor Osiman, who has played a fair. Do you know, can we see all of the games? Can I put mine on here? Because then we can actually see. How many goals are being scored? Look, it is not. He's got four in nine. I think it's Harry Kane that's still starting as the striker. Look, which I find really interesting. Uh, is that like a is that a PA thing? Is that a uh, a squad status thing? I'm not really sure. But either way, they're still playing Harry Kane. I think they're going to give him a new deal. Oh, look, Camavinga wants to leave because he wants a new contract. They've not offered him it. Man United are in for him. Should we sign him at Almer? I don't think we could. They have done some transfers, though, which is something I wanted to show you. Before, actually, before the transfers, I wanted to show you this as well. When I go to staff, I found it really interesting that after we left, we got rid of Paratici, remember? They made Monchi. You know, like one of the most famous director of footballs in world football? They made Monchi their director of football. I find it like so cool. Really, really cool. Will Still is still there in the job as well. Their new assistant manager, by the way. Can I see it on here? Just notice that Stephen Naismith is there. Their latest assistant manager, maybe if I organize these, is uh, Tom Hart, who is this guy here, is their assistant manager. So, I don't know. He replaces Will Still, is what I kind of think we need to get into. Their hot prospect is this Escura, who... Can we loan him now? We actually... No, we can't. He still played for too many clubs. I mean, he looks like he's going to be a... Has he played games for them? He's played one game for them. Interesting. Uh, transfers anyway. Back to these transfers. They have signed a fair few. They spent 65 million. They've sold players for 32 million. One of those will be Travis Caritero. They sold Alfie Devine. They loaned out Vita Rock 8 to Barcelona. Daniel Gall is someone I signed as well. They've loaned him out. They've bought Florian Verts. I did. De La Vega, I did. Ezcura and Gall, I did. Diaby. Musa Diaby to play on the left wing or the right wing. He came in. And that is because before the tick over, they sold... Jeremy Pino to Manchester City for £111 million. Is that the difference between City finishing wherever they did last season and now winning the league this year? Maybe. Pino's moved on to City for £111 million. I guess that helps with the finances as well, doesn't it? They haven't done a fire sale, though. They're, com they're getting on okay with the with the money that I um, and all the debt that I left them with. They're second in the league. In the Champions League, how are they doing in that as well? Let's just go through. It's not knockouts, right? Yeah, they're still in the they're still in the league phase. How are they doing in this league phase? They're six. They're doing fine. They've won four of their six games in that as well. So they're doing okay, Spurs, without us. With Will still, still in charge. Now actually officially a manager, by the way. You can actually see how many games he's played. These are since we were there. He's won 17 of his 32. I think. I think we must have left them in a decent position because they're doing okay. I know they're not winning the league, but they're doing okay, aren't they? Are they still in the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup? They are... No, they're out of the Carabao Cup. They lost to Southampton on a shootout, and I don't think they've entered the FA Cup yet. They haven't. They've got Ebbsfleet in that. That's where we're at with the... Oh, my word. The run they've been on. They actually maybe would have been much closer to City. They've not won, or they didn't win, in five games before the most recent win. So do you know what? They actually... This, this title race, which looks like it's done, must have been a lot closer. I imagine City have won all of their games recently. Pretty much, yeah. So that's actually most recently, in the last month or so, is where it's all changed. Over the, the December, busy December period, maybe that's where it happened. Haaland's still there. Ancelotti is the, uh, the City manager. There's your update anyway. I'm going to go and probably play the rest of January now. If there are any updates, I will bring them to you. If there aren't, then this will be the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching today. It's been an absolute pleasure. 
to share this save with you. I'm having so much fun with it. If you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. It, you know, it's just a nice thing. We're on about 41,000. I want to get to 45 and then 50k. 50k being a big aim before the end of FM23 would be ginormous for me. So you could help me. If you've not already subscribed, you could help me with that right now, couldn't you? Thank you so much for all the support, all the comments. I made sure I read all of them, by the way. So thank you. Keep them coming. Like the video if you've enjoyed it. But most importantly, thank you for watching today. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>